This is a case of standard right radial axis. We advanced the J wire. It went through without difficulty. However, we encountered difficulty advancing our six French diagnostic catheter. We encountered resistance here and the patient started to have some pain. What is your thought when you see something like this? And what is the next step? So the catheter is getting stuck at the forearm or at the elbow level. What's your next thought? So when you see resistance to catheter advancement at this level, think that the wire has gone into a small radial branch which joins the high brachial or axillary artery. It branches off the high brachial or axillary artery. And the catheter could not track over that small radial. And there are three options for that small radial you're going into. These are the three options. So you could be having a high branching small radial that is the only radial and in that case, you will have to most often abort. You can try to give vasodilators through the catheter, but if you keep encountering difficulties, you may have to abort. Keep in mind that most often a high branching single radial is usually large and a lot of time you don't even pay attention to it. This is seen in 7% of individuals. But when it's high branching and small and it's the single radial, you may have to abort if it persists being small despite vasodilators. Now, the second option, all three options are high branching radial, but the second option is that it's a high branching small radial in conjunction with a better and bigger larger radial that branches at the elbow. In this case, you need to redirect your gear toward that bigger standard branching radial. And the third option is that you actually have a radial loop. And that's, in my experience, the most common option when you encounter difficulties like this, is that you actually have a radial loop and there is a standard branching radial artery of the elbow after the loop, but there is also a small branch coming from the apex of the loop and joining high up the brachial or the axillary and your gear is going into that easier, straight, small radial. So those are the three options. In options two and three, you need to redirect your gear to the main radial. And uh, that is more difficult when it's the situation three, when there is a loop that gets you into the main radial. And when the gear wants to go into the easier, small radial coming off the apex of the loop. So what you do in those cases, you do a non-selective angiogram, and mainly under subtraction. And in this patient, what you can see is the following. We are encountering difficulties here. This is at the form level, and this is the elbow. We are encountering difficulties here. So you can see this is the radial artery at the forearm, and it splits into one main branching radial artery here, and another high branching radial artery. And we were going into that one. There is no loop into that patient. And sometimes you have to confirm in an angle view, ipsilateral angle view, that there is no loop that you're foreshortening in an AP view. But this patient had no loop. So all we had to do is redirect our gear into this one. So we were in situation two, which is the easier situation. So this is what we did here. So we used an IM five French catheter along with a Woolly O35 inch soft tip. And with the IM, we directed the Woolly wire into the main radial artery into the brachial. And you can see here, this is the IM. It's pointing into the main radial and we advance our wire into that main radial. And then we were able to advance our gear very easily. Now, like I said, the more common situation is, however, something like this from another patient where you have difficulty advancing, you do a non-selective angiogram at the forearm level, and you see this. This is the radial. 
and our gear is going to that small one here. Whereas the true radial branching at the elbow is going this way via a loop. This is a loop. There is an angulation here, and there is another angulation that goes into the brachial artery. So there are two angulations here. This is what we call a radial loop. So you need to redirect your gear from this small branch here coming from the apex of the loop that's easy to go into. You need to redirect into that loop, then into the main system. That small radial can perforate if you keep going into it. Plus the fact that you cannot advance your gear into it because it's small and spastic. So you need to redirect. And in those cases, when you have a loop, generally speaking, trying to advance an O35 wire doesn't work. You need in those cases to do what we did here, which is use an O14 to O18 inch wire, a smaller wire, and a four French glide cath, angled glide cath. So you advance that into the loop, you cross the loop, as you will see here. This is an O14 inch whisper wire that we advanced here. We cross the loop and you can see the wire going through the loop. Then over that, you advance a flimsy four French glide sheath that will be able to track over an O14 or O18 inch wire. Then after that, if the loop gets straightened, you exchange that O14 inch wire to an O35 inch more supportive wire, like a J wire or a Rosen wire. Then over that, you can advance eventually your six French gear. And those are the steps. Remember, do not use a glide wire at the level of that forearm or arm because you do have a lot of flimsy small branches and the glide wire, which is a polymer or 35 inch wire, will tend to go into those branches and perforate them. So do not use a glide wire. Use that technique I described, O14 to O18 inch wire. And you track over it a four French flimsy glide catheter. You exchange for an O35 inch wire. Then you advance the six French catheters. And the loop has to straighten at one point for you to be able to advance the six French catheters. Otherwise, you may need to abort. The six French catheters are not going to be able to track through this, especially guide catheters. The loop has to straighten at one point before you can advance the six French catheter. It has to straighten whether with the 0.014 inch wire or with the glide cath advanced over the 014 or 018 inch wire or with the eventual 035 inch wire. And if it doesn't straighten spontaneously with those wires or glide cath, what you can do you can pull the whole system, the glide cath, pull with a counter clock maneuver from a right radial axis, and you use a clock maneuver from a left radial axis if you're standing on the right side of the body. So pull with a counter clock from a right radial axis. And this is what was done here in another case, and the loop straightened. And we were able to eventually advance a six French catheter over the O35 inch wire. Now, if the loop does not straighten at some point with the O14 inch or the glide cath or the O35 inch wire, or if the patient complains of significant pain during the eventual six French catheter advancement, the access often needs to be aborted.